charismatic, dazzling, dynamic, Freddie Mercury was one of rock music's all-time greatest showmen. Freddie just had that crowd in the palm of his hand. You just made everyone feel elevated. You just came away on such a high. But this smallest of small town boys, who reinvented himself as a world conquering rock god, had the most unlikely of beginnings. It doesn't seem believable that a dude who's born in Zanzibar with sizable teeth could become this unbelievable superstar. If you want to be as good as Freddy, you have to be superhuman. The voice, unique. Queen weren't just another band, they were the biggest band on the face of the planet. From day one, they knew what they wanted. Queen showed us how to be a stadium rock band. Tonight, we've gathered together super fans. They will be bigger than the Beatles, they'll be bigger than Elvis. Old Flames. He was a very ardent lover. And best friends. We just became closer, we're like brothers really. And almost three decades after his untimely death, we celebrate the moments that help make Freddie Mercury and Queen the legends they remain to this day. Freddie Mercury was a true icon. What amazes me is the charisma that he just exudes everywhere he went. The way he enjoyed every single second of being there and, and performing for people, he was just magnificent. But away from the spotlight, Freddie's friends saw a different side. Any sort of arrogance was an act on stage. You know, there was, there was none of that. I saw none of that behind the scenes. He was definitely two people, and, um, and I think the pressure of it was enormous. So how could a self-conscious boy from an island in the Indian Ocean transform himself into one of the world's most celebrated entertainers? He was unique then, and I think he was unique now, actually. And I think in a lot of respects, actually, he was probably the first genuine global Asian pop star. Along the way, writing one of the most startlingly original and unconventional songs in recording history. Baba, just killed a man. Talking about Bohemian Rhapsody is a bit like talking about the moon landings or the assassination of John F. Kennedy. The grandness, the scale is gigantic. <laughs> From the basements of 60s London to the pinnacle of the global stage, we chart the extraordinary ascent of the world's most unlikely rock star. Freddie Mercury was born Farouk Bulsara on the 5th of September 1946. His beamingly sunny personality evident early on in this charming, classically framed family portrait of baby Freddie. Growing up in Stonetown on the island of Zanzibar, the family was Zoroastrian by faith, an ancient, deeply traditional religion, and were wealthy by local standards, instilling an appreciation of arts and music into their young boy. Freddie being born on the island of Zanzibar is kind of exotic in itself and he's actually his family background, the values that they had and the traditional values that they had, it had a huge impact on him. They were quite privileged as a family. But apparently they had a white grand piano in the house, of all things, but, um, which he used to play, of course. His father, Bommy, worked for the British government and could afford a private education for Farouk but that meant sending the eight-year-old 3,000 miles away to boarding school in India. It would mark the start of Freddie's great lifelong adventure. Impossible to miss, smiling sweetly in this stiffly posed school photo, Freddie, as Farouk became known by his schoolmates, developed a passion for rock and roll whilst at St Peter's. We talked about boarding school a lot because I was at boarding school too. He learned to play the piano and at his boarding school and mine we were allowed to have um, Elvis Presley, we were allowed to have all the kind of uh, current records. While at school, Freddie formed a band called the Hectics. Their love of performing shines through in this candid snapshot, epitomising both the era and their youthful passion. He was so into music at his private school, he formed his own little band 
and he would be playing the piano away and even composing then. He was very keen on mimicking, you know, Little Richard and anybody, even Cliff Richard. <laughs> In his early years, he was a shy boy, teased with the nickname Bucky for his prominent teeth which feature clearly in this formerly posed trophy shot of a bashful schoolboy Freddy. It was something that would cause him embarrassment for the rest of his life. As a child, Freddy definitely struggled with some bullying. The fact that people would talk about his teeth and the overbite that he had. Freddy had a great deal of self-consciousness about his mouth, his teeth and his smile. So he would always be pulling his lips in, uh, Every time he smiled, he'd realise his teeth would stick right out. He had four too many teeth. And the logical thing would be to have these extra teeth taken out. But he point-blank refused. He used to do this, had this mannerism of uh, curling his top lip over his teeth. I thought it was fun, you know. I thought it was a sort of clever little tick that he had. But I think he was a little embarrassed about his protruding teeth. After finishing school in India, Freddie returned home, but in 1964 was uprooted once again when a violent revolution forced the Bulsaras out of Zanzibar. They moved to the UK and the sleepy West London suburb of Feltham. It was a massive culture shock for the whole family, but Freddie Bulsara's reinvention had begun. He had a lovely family, his uh, mother and father and his sister were lovely people very reserved, religious. His parents were resistant to 60s culture because it was quite a culture shock. It was all kicking off very much. Um, You've got that generational uh, struggle, haven't you, between the parents who want their child to succeed in a conventional way, and then you've got the child themselves uh, who want to be creative and who want to be free and who want to break the bonds of the establishment that they've grown up in. His parents might not have approved of Western youth culture, but Freddie was more than ready to embrace it. It must have been a dream for him, actually, to turn up in 60s London, uh, where it was all happening. If we talk about swinging London, it's just a total generational shift. It's the idea that you can change, the idea that you can become someone that you want to be without the constraints that your parents would have grown up in. And, and it's that sense of liberation. It's almost impossible to imagine moving from Zanzibar to London. I mean, the actual 60s in London was a time of complete change and transformation. So I imagine it would have felt like an awakening. The pieces were falling into place and the extraordinary transformation of Farouk Bulsara into Freddie Mercury was underway.